In the previous episode, we finished our drive to the Arctic Ocean and back. The next challenge is to get through the wildfires that are south. At the time, we're unsure whether the road was still blocked off between Stuart Crossing and Pally's Crossing. As there's no cell phone coverage on the Dempster Highway, we used our trusty Garmin and Reach to text Mike's son for an update. Thankfully, the road south had reopened. On the Dempster Highway you really need to get all that muck off because I put stuff in the gravel to stop it from being dusty so really important to get that stuff off your car so we're going to do that now. One step at a time We all play our part Go on now Be good Be fine So Mike's just looking, our muffler, what's happened to our muffler? It's come and drift at the box. Uh, auto shops in town are booked for the month, the whole month, it's just the start of July. So Mike's going to try and fix it himself. Next time I have a muffler problem, I'm going to book in six months in advance. <laughs> So this is the old air filter, this is the new air filter. Right, <laughs> yes it's black rubber and this is orange rubber but... But look at it, that's after doing the Dempster, it wasn't that bad before we no, started like, for like sure. No, it's like that to start it off with. like that, yeah, so we're swapping that out. While we're in Whitehorse, Mike works some magic on the muffler, smearing paste to seal up the holes. Let's hope it holds. After that, we wandered through the fireweed markets, then went on a mission to find the Whitehorse horse. So we've just been at the fireweed markets and this is fireweed. Taking a little walk along the Yukon River in Whitehorse. There's a horse here too, we've got to go find the horse before we leave. We found it, but it isn't white. So this is the Whitehorse horse and every piece on the sculpture has been contributed by a Yukoner someone from the Yukon. It represents the origin of the city's name as well as the fact that we're all responsible for the shaping of the Yukon each in our small way. There's even a wine goblet up there on the horse's foot. Some horseshoes. There's a frying pan up there like a cast iron fry pan. So we're just going to um, hook up with the Alaska Highway now and we're going to start heading southwest on our way down to Vancouver, which will probably be our next major city. Today we're going to do a forest, but it's a different type of forest. So we're just coming into Watson Lake now. We're going to try and get showers and then we're going to go and show you the forest that's different. So this is the forest with a difference. It's a signpost forest. This forest was started by a homesick soldier in the 1940s on the construction of the Alcan. Being homesick, he decided to put up a sign pointing back to his hometown. And since then, 
as people cross, they add to the signs. And uh, a bit later on, we'll tell you how many there are here at the latest count. The place is huge. I'm going to see if I can find any from New Zealand. In England. Well, there's plenty from England. Just like that from talking about it, there's one from New Zealand. Bargable. And this is a forest that keeps growing. They quite often put up new posts just for people to put their number plates on. So it's a growing forest of number plates of signs. So we've made a pretty average looking sign, put up on the signpost. I've got a hammer to nail. Now we've got to go find somewhere to put it. There wasn't a lot of room in the signpost for us when we looked, but hopefully we can find somewhere to put our sign. Still looking for more New Zealand signs. We've seen one so far, as well as our one. Signposts are all looking pretty full. We found a spot. So there's two up from New Zealand now. I'm sure there's some more, we just haven't seen them. Found another New Zealand one. Geordie and Pat from Russell in New Zealand. Who's that? Who's oh, another one here. Tauranga. So if you're coming here and you want to find our sign, here's the road, sign post is here. You're going to show the people, or follow Mike, so you don't go through there, you turn to the right of that. Third road, turn right. We're on the 18th pole on the left. There you go, you'll see us there. Take a photo, send it to us. We'll be so happy. Right, Noel and Chris from Omokoroa. Morning. Welcome to another day. We're just leaving Watson Lake, the signpost. We camped there last night, had showers, nice. And today we're going to head, keep on heading southeast along the Alaska Highway. We're going to go to the Laird Hot Springs and to Port Nelson. So come along, it'll be fun. So we've just left the Yukon, we'll cross back into BC. There's a sign there saying there's Birds of bison on the highway, so we'll keep an eye out for them. Get caught up in another bison jam we had happened last year in South Dakota. Just seen our first bear in ages. Um, he's just over there, just on the other side of the road, having a little munch. Don't see any bears in Alaska except for one just outside of Haines. So that's bear number 19. Just seen two more bears over there, a mother and a cub. Getting a fight from the truck. <laughs> Back in the Canada, we're seeing beers. That takes our count to 21 beers so far. We've so seen so many beers this morning. Mike's got his bear spray. <laughs> That's all the driftwood. I could, you could be at the beach, except it's a river. So this is Whirlpool Canyon. And we're not far from the hot springs. What a nice little spot would have been to camp. Yeah. Just seen bear number four for the day up there. Wandering back into the bushes. <laughs> I can't believe this. We've been months without seeing a bear. And suddenly there's more bears back. Like Mike said, it's because we're back in BC, which stands for bear country. That makes sense. Just seen our fifth bear for the day. This is crazy. Well, I think because the Alaska Highway is quite good, it's got big open bits on each side of the road. So you can actually see them really easily. Just seen our sixth bear for the day. It's funny, he's just sitting down having a little munch. Lazy bear, can't even bother to stand. And now he's standing up, he's got his bum in the air. I was just wondering if it's That's like... That's put scent down. Oh, So we just parked up at the Liard Springs. We're gonna take a walk down. It's a 10 minute walk. They've got electrified wire all the way. That's I guess to stop the bears sneaking in for a midnight swim. But we'll take our bear spray as well, just in case. Electrified fence. <laughs> these bears must really like these hot springs. This is nice, what a nice walk this is. So 
it's five dollars each to come to the hot pool and it's just a really nice walk along a boardwalk 10 minute walk here is a not so hot one it's just perfect temperature this one's very hot give it a go oh yeah oh, this is nice it's Ooh. a bit better down the scent actually after having gotten into the Ooh. other end what's up <laughs> it's got bubbles down its shorts oh it's too hot for me i'm getting out so we had a hot shower yesterday a hot bath today what next Soon we'll be bathing every day. Little red squirrel there. Isn't he cute? Watch out for the electric fence, little squirrel. A truck and a car just flashed us. We've seen why. There's bison up on the side of the road here. At least those bison were staying off the road. One of our videos last year, if you've seen it, in South Dakota, we had bison just, they just walk into the road and stop right in front of us and we were sweltering in 40 degree heat, not able to move. They're holding us hostage. Calling in to have a look at the Muncho Lake viewpoint. We would have liked to have spent a few days at Muncho Lake, but all the campgrounds were full and there's no free camping in the area. We spent the next three days camping at this amazing free camp beside the river. We needed to make some minor repairs to the van and give it a good clean from the dempster dust which had infiltrated Roger. This is pretty nice isn't it? Got our beer, got our little view. Free camping, it doesn't get much better than this and it's about, oh, about 32 degrees I think. But we won't be swimming in there, for one it's too fast and the other it's like, it's literally liquid ice, it's freezing. We're gonna clean the car out. So we've got all the stuff out, gonna wipe it all down because it's all covered in dust from the dempster. So Mike's made a good start at the back here. Look at that, <laughs> tidy that is. Just gotta wipe all that, put it back in and just work our way forward. And there's a few little repairs we have to do on the car as well. bug here trying to get into our van. I'm not letting it in. See, it's huge. I don't even know what it is. But it's ugly and it's been trying for ages to get into the car. Make sure he doesn't hitch on any of our stuff we've got out there. Join us in the next episode where we drive through wildfires and exhaustion finally hits us. So I've got a bit of a temperature this morning. And the burning question, did that bug get in our van? <laughs> <laughs>